Ooh, walk up to him. Let the horse turn his head to where he can see you. Speak to him, put your hand on him. Ooh, ooh. Now he's comfortable with you. He knows where you are. Walk over here and let him. If you can see his eye, he can see you. He can see me right out of that right eye because I can see it. A horse has monocular vision. He can look right back here with one eye. If you can see his eye, he can see you. So you ought to always put your hand on him. You ought to speak to him, let him look at you. And then he'll never be afraid of you. In this tape, we go into some additional basic maneuvers. Basically, we're staying with circles, but we're trying to talk about spins, pivots, stops, and backs. And again, we have a pretty willing pupil in the Palomino mare that we're riding, but again, you'll find a couple of places we get along into the tape where uh, maybe she doesn't perform as well as we'd like, and we've got some other horses that we can insert in there and take a look at. However, keep in mind the training principle and the technique behind how to teach this to your horse is the same. Let's begin now and talk about some additional maneuvers that we can teach your horse. As we talk about these maneuvers, some of them's going to be kind of awkward for the horse. It's kind of like going to the dance and they're doing a new step you didn't know before you got there. And as you try to learn that step, you're going to be awkward. You may step on some people's toes. You may step on your partner's toes. Same time, this horse may step on his own feet. So as we try to teach him, move him into some additional things, things that have a little more speed to them, things that are a little harder, it's good to talk about some good equipment. One of them is try to protect your horse's feet and legs. What I have on this mare on the offside is a splint boot on the front and a skid boot on the back. I'm gonna put these on for us and talk about why we would use them. And if I put skid boots on this horse, it's basically to protect the horse, keep him from burning his fetlocks, burning the under his foot right here if he slides and stops that hard. Now, and it's nice that a lot of this equipment's made anymore where it's easy to put on, doesn't take a lot of time or activity. Now, <clears throat> I tell people when we put those skid boots on, I may be bragging. By bragging in that a horse has to stop pretty hard to be able to use skid boots or to need them. And we're bragging a little if we think we've got our horse stopping hard enough that we better put skid boots on him so he won't burn himself. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Splint boots go on the front, and they're basically up here to protect the horse's cannon bone, protect him around his foot, keep him from, during a period of time when he is awkward, and that some of the things you'll see I'm gonna try to get him to do, they're protecting, keep him hurting himself with his other foot. And these go on here pretty fast. Doesn't take but a few minutes to put them on. And they are good to put on your horse, take a little extra time, safety and precaution. And I'll show you in a minute that if they protect this horse, they'll, he will try a little harder. Now, these splint boots have extra protection right in here to keep the horse from taking this foot and striking that leg over there. If I ask him to step across and he takes this foot and strikes that one, he may try for me to do what I'm trying to show him. But if he hits that foot and it hurts, then he'll quit trying. So we, it, he's more trainable if he doesn't hurt himself. Now I'm gonna do some of these things. We'll talk a little bit more about the equipment. I'm gonna ride this mare with a snaffle bit. There's my Ronnie Martingale hanging in my stirrup. As we talked about in previous tapes, that Ronnie Martingale could have a strap goes over the withers and could be hanging right there. When I don't use the strap, so uh, to lead the horse, I'll just hang it up there. So that may look a little odd to you, but that's a way of being able to move the horse around and lead him with a Ronnie Martingale on. And I have what we'd call a pretty finished, pretty long running Martingale. Kind of up under the horse's throat. Maybe it could be a whole larger yet, longer yet, because we're thinking now that the horse doesn't need it a great deal, shouldn't depend on it, shouldn't have to have it, plus the fact I'm gonna be turning this horse and doing a lot of things laterally. 
Short running martingale just restricts that. So we don't want a short, overly short, that's gonna restrict this horse's movement. So we can pull the head sideways with this and do a lot of things. Okay. Now, first thing I want to spend a little time with is talking about how that we can teach our horse to stop. And you have to teach a horse to stop. What I mean, teach him, you cannot make him. You cannot force him. For this horse to stop correctly, we need his hind feet to come up under him and for it to not be a lot of trauma involved in me as a rider and trying to ride it. And the horse needs to get his hind feet up under him and if he needs to, to slide on them and to put as little weight as possible on his front feet and keep him from bracing and stopping hard in front. Horse that stops hard in front, you can't ride, he really can't stop, it jars you, and he really can't stop hard. So he's got to, got to get his hind feet up under him. He has to, I can do everything, I can pull on his face, I, I can pull on his head, I can do anything I want to, but nobody can turn the motor off, can stop but except the horse itself. So I guess that's why I'm saying we have to teach him to stop, to want to stop. If I have to force him to, then I get into him fighting with me, us into a, some kind of a confrontation between horse and rider to the point that the horse will set his head, brace, get a brace in him, get heavy in front, and bounce in front. So I, I've got to get him, train him, coax him, teach him to want to turn that motor off. If he wants to turn it off, stop running, then he can put his feet under him and learn how to stop. Now, as we've said before, everything we're gonna teach a horse, we'll teach him at a walk and then a trot, and then extend the trot, and we start teaching the horse to stop and back. I think we need to put the two together at a walk. Whoa. Use the auditory stimuli. Use the word whoa. And change your feet position a little. Now, if this mare had ignored the, oral, the, the auditory command and my feet, then I would have uh, negatively, if you want to call it, punished her in her mouth. I would have gotten into her mouth and have told her she should listen to me. But as long as she's listening, that's great. That's the way we teach her to listen so that we can just say, whoa, and can stop the horse. Now, if the horse did not listen, then we would have gotten a hold of her head and a pull, if we had to, pretty hard to have, to have asked her to stop. Whoa. See me slide my feet out and be pretty obvious. What do you want to be so cute for? Let the horse know what you want. As he gets a little more advanced, just a suggestion of moving those feet will stop him, much more than you think, much more maybe than you even want. So in the beginning, be pretty obvious. Go along there then at the sit and trot. Just sit down on this horse and just sit here. Watch me change my body position. Whoa. And the horse listen and stop, instinctively kind of taking a little back, back step or two. It's not totally necessary in the beginning. But you, that he does listen to you, and we'll talk about the use of the stop so much as an integral part of collection. That's the way we train this horse to go on a loose rein. If she wants to extend, whoa, the best way for me to punish her is stop her and back her. Punish her by punish her, I mean to scold her, reprimand her for trotting off without me telling her to, for extending her trot or for extending the lope or anything else without me asking for it. That's the horse that we say just runs off with us. And that's the best way we can do that, one of the real good techniques. So if we start working at this stop, and we work at it at the trot, and we work at it at a sit and trot, whoa, we use whoa, use our feet position, and you can use your hands some more on it. All right, you get that built in. You're getting them started, there's not much reason for them to have to have a certain form yet because you haven't got much speed. Now start using that long trot we talked about, the good technique that the rider's gonna need. Start using it. Where you lean up and trot the horse on out, and then very obviously, whoa, 
Now, if you watched, the horse's hind feet came up under, even at the trot. So you do that, you do that, you repeat it, and think what a cue you're giving that horse. You're standing up, and all of a sudden, whoa. You do that, and you don't, and if he ignores it, then get in his mouth. But teach him something that will let him stop and relax and know that it's not going to be painful. It may be painful if you've got a big old bit hung in his mouth and he's afraid of it. He'll never relax. For a horse to stop good, he has to relax. And there's a really a little shuffle as his back feet comes up under him and he drops his hind quarters down. So we just got to do it where the horse is not afraid of us, he's not scared, and where we can trot the horse out. Ooh. And we can use that technique right there over and over and over again. We use the same thing then after we get the horse going, and we'll do that until he begins to listen. Just do it until he begins to listen. And if I ask him to stop, and I won't pull real hard on this from her to punish her, but ooh, right there's where I ought to get a hold hard if he didn't stop. Right after it, right with it. Now, when this horse is finished, I'm probably never going to ask the horse to stop without touching his mouth. I'm, a, I'm using this as an illustration, but how hard will I have to touch it very lightly? Whoa. I'm probably never going to I'd just stop him on a loose rein. But to get the point across, then I, it just takes light pressure to stop him because all the other cues are there, and the horse has learned what they are, honesty again, truthfulness, being honest with him, and he appreciates them, and they don't hurt him. So in the process of doing that, he learns. If I have to hurt him a little, I'll hurt him because he ignored him. Now, if we go into the lope, we're going to use the same principle. We're going to let this horse lope around here, just relaxed. And I'm not going to ask the horse to stop for a little bit, let the horse relax. And a lot of times, if I'm starting with a pretty naive horse, We'll lope this horse till he kind of wants to stop. I'll lope him till he may be out of air. He's kind of breathing heavy. He's kind of tired, and he's kind of wanting to quit. And when he gets to that point, that's a good time then to ask him to stop, but always ask him correctly. So as I come around over there again, all I'm going to do is sit down and speak to my horse, and I may touch his mouth just a little. Ooh. Nothing hard, but really correct. That's as, that's as correct as he needs to be. That's all the speed I had up. That's all the speed I had. Horse dropped his hind quarters down, got his hind feet up behind him, and stopped correctly. But we spend a lot of time, and I tell people, you don't go out today and train your horse to stop. Neither do you break him today, neither do you bit him today. All of those are ongoing problems that you work at all of the time. But what you do in the process of riding your horse, teaching him anything, or for all of the reasons you ride him, no telling, if you counted them in an hour's riding, you may stop that horse 20 times. And every time you stop him, that's when you work on the stop. So you've got a lot of this in between. Just a series of one stop right after another will get the horse neurotic get the horse to anticipate in the stop, and he won't be nice, free, and clean, and something you appreciate. So you lope a lot of circles. You get your horse right. Get him to go in like you want him. Get him kind of wanting to stop. But if you don't stop him but 20 times, stop him correctly. If you've got to stop to go get a drink of water, stop the horse correctly. Ooh. And the horse learns to stop, say whoa to him, let him appreciate the the verbal command, the auditory command, receive some stimuli that way means something to it. Now, if I were running this hard horse down somewhere in a horse show or something, I might, I'd probably say whoa to him, but you wouldn't hear it. I'd say it's so light, and nobody heard it but me and the horse. But the horse can hear better. He can hear better than you think. I'm uh, exaggerating, and in the beginning, like leg, cue, leg cues, hand cues, or anything else, Make them very obvious at first. Whoa, very positive. And that same, same thing can build up into just a little old light. Oh.
You can't even get quieter than that and work. You can get to almost, oh, it's surprising what horses can pick up. They can pick up tenseness in your body. They can pick up your breathing, so to speak. They can pick up tenseness, and they can sure pick up just, just the slightest of a whisper. And you teach him to listen better by, whoo, put it quiet. He didn't hear too good, so you do that a little bit. And then you keep getting it quieter until, whoo, very quiet. Horse listens. He hears. But in the beginning, don't be afraid to make some noise. Tell him, whoo. I like to forgot, didn't I? Talking to you and said the word, but didn't really in a position to stop my horse. Okay, so we need to do that, be consistent, be honest all the way through in what we do. Now let's talk about I backed this mare quite a bit, and it's pretty obvious that she backs. I've already backed her enough, it's pretty obvious that she does. But let me just give a few keys to some people that are having trouble getting their horses to back. One of the things, and all the way through everything we're talking about, we've got head problems. We've got mouth problems. Let's remember all of the things we talked about on bidding, of training the horse to give with his head, get him light in his face. And let's remember that because that's basic, that's fundamental, and everything we're going to teach him, we just might well get that fixed. You just might well stop trying to do what you're going to do on a horse if you don't have control of his head and work on control of the head till you get it. Same way with feet, leg problems, if you can't control his body, you just might well stop what you're trying to do and get those things fixed because they're basic and fundamental. And whether you're running a barrel, cutting a cow, uh, uh, roping a calf or whatever you're doing, or you're just pleasure riding, you're riding anywhere as you're riding, you're going to go back and use those basic fundamental things. So they fit all horses. Be able to push him with your leg, move him, have him light up in the face and where you can give it. So if you've got that, whoa. Let me turn around over here like this. The first time I begin to ask these young horses to back, take a hold of them, bump them a little, and you get a couple of steps, reward, reinforce. Good, you learned how to do that. This is a step that's not natural to a horse backing up. I think if it were, a lot of horses wouldn't get injured as much as they do. They'll run themselves into a jackpot and don't know how to back out of it. So it's not a natural thing, and again, we want to teach a horse to back out of obedience rather than fear. The horse that backs out of fear never really learns to relax and walk backwards good. He's a scrambler. He just flies backwards. And so he really doesn't know what he's doing. So we start and we build, we get a couple of steps. Boy, that's good. Now we never ride this horse right back up if you want to get him to be a good backer. Start him from here, get three steps. Appreciate that. Don't go back up there. Let the horse find out that the quitting place is back there somewhere. And let the horse learn how to walk backwards. Ask him again. Now I'm taking you through what might be two or three weeks training as you try to get this horse to back him more freely and being tolerant, requesting and demanding a lot out of the horse, but being tolerant as this horse tries to learn to walk backwards, which is a new step for him and it does take him a while. Pick him up at this point, back him again, and just keep backing him. So you build on it progressively. Now, whatever you do, don't run back up in the other hole. Why not run back up there? Then the horse finds out the quitting place is up there. Why should I go back here when the quitting place is going to be up there? Let the quitting place always be behind you. I'll even turn a horse off and go another direction rather than ride back up in those same stops if you really want to get the horse to back. Now, if you spend some time with it, be quiet. If this is a horse that I had one in just a clinic the other day that the people were afraid to put much pressure on his face because the horse had reared up and flipped over backwards. And it scared the lady, and I appreciate that. If you go back and think about everything I said about bidding, basically a horse rears, it's easier to walk backwards than it is to rear up. So why would he want to rear? Out of ignorance not knowing how to get off of that pressure. That pressure's there, he doesn't know how to walk backwards, so you coax him just a half a step at a time. You get him to move in a little. If you can't move him at all, move him sideways a little and come back. Untrack him. Move him over this way and get him to walk backwards a little bit. All of those are techniques to try to get the horse started to back it. What, don't be afraid on a horse that bad, if he's really a horse that's having a lot of problems, 
Go back to what I said about the bidding. Set the horse's head for a while. It won't hurt a thing. Get him light in his mouth so that then when he feels that instinctively, he wants to get off of it, get away from it. Where's relief? Back away from it. So do that and be careful when you first try to get him started. And if you can do that, set his head, get his mouth light, and then ask him to back. Once you get him started and learn how, then don't be afraid to ask him to back a great deal. A lot of people feel like that a horse has only so much back in him. If I back him too far, he'll hang up and freeze on me and won't back any further. That's not true. The horse is obedient. He ought to be able to back. He ought to be able to go as far backwards as he can frontwards. So it's just a matter of obedience and, and building it in your horse. And you can tell the difference when they're obedient, when this back's got a cadence in it, when the horse is backing just out of obedience rather than fear. And you just set on him and let him back. Bump his mouth a little, free him up if you have to, and don't worry about it. Teach him to back, make him practice. I'm back against the wall, I won't ride back up. I'll turn around, let my horse stay relaxed, ask him to back. We're going over there, we're just going backwards. So this horse has got to relax and just walk backwards. Now, not any different than most horses, I think she knows where she's going because she's sure a lot freer coming back. And I'll turn her around over here for you in just a minute after we get all the way back. And to show you that if you want one to back quicker, after he's learned how, yeah, you can speed him up if that's what you want to do after he's learned how. I'll do it two or three ways. I'll cluck to her. I'll bump her mouth a little harder. Or I may squeeze her with my legs. See that? Boy, she took off when I squeezed her a little. I never touched her with a spur or anything. Just dropped my legs down. That meant to hurry. Woo. Now, if you want to build that in your horse to be that fast, you can, but don't try to get that right away. Try to get that nice, comfortable walk back. See, I'm riding back up after I said for y'all not to do it. But you see what you get. That mare can hurry because she knows how to walk backwards. I should stop her back here and not right back up there. That's just obedience. We've done it slow a lot, and so she knows how to do it. Okay, I think we ought to understand a lot more then about our stop and our back. Now, let me work a little bit more at the stop. And that we, if we've got that, all of it built in there, then we should speed the horse up just, just easy, just slowly. Ooh. Nothing any worse than to run the horse through a stop, run him so hard, so fast, through something that he can't handle yet. Don't bring him up all the way and just open him up with all he's got. If I raise my hands up and ask the horse to go, whoo, getting a little better. And that'd just get better if I got more speed. It takes speed to develop a slide. So we just speed it up, and if we can't handle it there, back off some. If the horse's form is not right, go back down. Form's not right, he's not listening, well then go back down. I've stopped this mare going that way every time. Let me turn her around and kind of stop her going this way by letting her speed up just a little bit. I don't know whether I can get her stopped this way or not. Ooh. Not bad, not great. Not bad. Ooh. Now I should let her get quiet and settle a little bit. Nothing real great right there, but that was correct form. Horse just needs to get in the dirt a little harder and stop a little quieter. Let the horse relax. I run her out there a little bit and fuzzed her up just a little, but that's where I check it. She gets too much fuzzed up, I can't do a lot of other things on her. Okay? Now, we've talked a lot about a lot of things we need to do on our horse. Uh, to get the horse moving laterally in front. I like to talk about lateral movement in front, control of the shoulder, control of the forequarters on the horse. When I pick up his face here, I also put the shoulder out. Pick up the shoulder and push this shoulder out. So we do that a lot and we'll talk about where that has relevance. When I pick his face up here, I push this shoulder over here out and pick that one up. Pick this face and shoulder up together. 
who will want to get him controlled, and a horse without some lateral movement in front is in bad shape as far as trying to really be an athlete and do anything. He has to be able to turn and move the front end. We call this, a lot, a lot of people get real impressed with a horse that can spin hard. Well, that's what we're talking about here, but it's more than just a spin. It's a lateral control of this front quarter where we can run in a circle. We can move it over while we're running. We can stop and move it right straight around into a spin. We can pivot it one way or the other. And we can run out here and stop going this way and do a 180 degree turn and go the other way. All of those maneuvers are taught the same way. They're taught with a horse getting flexible, getting all of the brace out of his front end, getting flexible in front, and getting to where he can move his forequarters. Now watch the horse's front feet. To move over, how's he gonna move? Just think about it a minute. Only way he can move is cross his front legs. If you watch the mare's front legs, he's gonna have to cross them to step over. You or I would have to do that, so obviously the horse does too. That's the only way she can take this end and put it over there, is step across in front. Now there's two key things about the step across in front. You can teach all horses to do it. One thing you need is forward motion. Forward motion, because when the horse steps across in front, I'd like for the outside leg to cross in front. If I do it without forward motion and ask him to step across, he steps underneath, underneath. Now the reason I don't want him to step underneath is he takes two steps and he has to move his hindquarters. If I can get him crossing in front and I'll start my circle bigger and let it gradually get down, this end can be still because he hasn't backed it off. So eventually what I want this horse to do is just to park this hind leg right here and just turn right around it. And to do that, I've got to have that front leg crossing in front. And I tell a lot of people, you can worry your horse by just sitting on him and walking him to be able to get him to cross over in front. You can just walk him, walk him, walk him. Just keep sitting on him, keep pulling his face, and don't let him stop. If he stops, he'll plant his forequarters, plant them, that means quit walking with them, and flop his hindquarters around. But he, if you've got him picking his front feet up, then you have an opportunity for him to set them laterally. If he has them planted in the ground, you can't hardly drive him straight over. But if you've got him picking them up, then you have a chance to, while he's got it up, to set it over. I think that's rather clear, and we need to keep forward motion in there. So we just walk this horse forward, just keep coming down. And you see we're getting tighter. Got a little circle, who cares? The horse is learning a new step. Step across in front. There, we get that much. Thank you, horse, that's all I need right now. You don't know how to do it all. So I get that and I go out here and just, just keep walking. And I'll just start and walk me a circle down here. And I like to pick up on my horse's face, kind of make him keep his body bowed just a little, not an overly flexed horse. I just see, I just picked up on there with my fingers, don't take much. I'll lay a little neck rein on there and just keep walking. Say, all right, there's two or three good steps. You say, well, that didn't impress me very much. Well, that right there will build you into a hard 360 spin if you appreciate it. Another thing we didn't talk about when we talk about the psychology and, of training is the fact that we want to reinforce successive approximations of our desired you know, response. That's a, an approximation of what I want. So I'm getting there. I build on it. This time I'm going to walk around and I'm gonna ask for another step or two. Got two or three more, I come out. Don't stay there and ask for more. I could ask for a little more on this mare, but I'm trying to relate to that naive horse that don't know how to do it. So you're gonna get about, if you can get that much, you'll be doing good. See, my feet slide out now, and the horse come all the way around 360. Now that's the way you teach that. Now you can do it with a trot. Go out here with a trot. Take a hold of your horse's head with both hands. 
set his head in here where you can put his head where you want it. Again, it helps if he's obedient in his head. Just trot him down, just hold him. Just trot him down, 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 round, 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 and out. And you got to just keep him going forward. Don't ever let his front end quit. I didn't ask him to keep his hind leg still then, but I didn't ask him to move the hind leg. So he naturally just starts holding it, all right? Because I'm not asking it to move. I am asking the front end to move. You'll see me lay the off rein on there and ask the horse to step straight across. Step straight across. Very correct, and the hind end didn't move, okay? I didn't use any leg. People ask me about leg. You can use leg two or three places. If your horse don't want to stay round out in a circle to start with, you can put a little inside leg on him. Keep him in there honest so that he can step across. And then on the outside, if you want to lay a little leg on him, you can. I don't do it at this stage. If I can get the horse started, I don't want to put any more aversive stimuli to him than he needs. And if he'll listen to my hands and just kind of come around, I won't lay any more on him. My feet are away from him, and the horse is relaxed. You hear me cluck to him a lot. I talk to him. Tell him to hurry a little now. You've kind of learned how to do it. Now hurry a little. So you can start now trying to tell him to hurry just a little. Keep him going forward. And if you try to tell your horse to hurry, and he can't handle it, he tries to break and run off, you need to go back slow again. You need to get back down there slow again, get him to where he can handle it. But you've got to check him out at times and ask him to hurry up a little and see what he's got, see if he can handle it. Okay? Not bad. Now, I'm going to hurry her with my leg this time. I'm going to take my foot and just pop her with the flat of my foot on her shoulder. I'm just going to pop her with the flat of my foot now and tell her to hurry. I'm just going to kind of scare her a little bit and lay it up there. And you can see that it'll work. But I could hold her. She didn't try to run off. Okay? That's one way to use your feet. And if she don't try to run off, she'll get better. Now that time I did not put a foot on her. That's the kind of way to use your reinforcement. Like in one of the earlier tapes when I spurred the mare a little hard and, uh, you know, had to wait on her a while to come back down. But when she came back, she was right. So some of that you need to realize as far as negative reinforcement is concerned. You know, you go to kind of putting that on them, sometimes you'll get some reaction you don't want. Lay it off the next time. Don't let the horse learn. He's not operating out of fear. He's learning to avoid that slap on the shoulder. Right, avoidance conditioning. So go back to him and ask him with something that he can tolerate. Now, <laughs> you can use your legs. Another real good way to use it, and I, I, I ride with spurs, but if I use the spurs only after I've asked the horse with my hands and my legs something he can tolerate, then I can train him with a spur. I can do the same thing with a bat. But if I ask him to do something with a bat first, without ever asking him with my hands and legs, then I've got the whole thing turned around backwards, and my horse will never learn off of the natural cue. Put your cue on there first, and then reinforce it with a negative. So another good way to do it is you can use a bat real good. Get my reins fixed, and take a little time. Don't, reins will bother you the more you're trying to do. You'll find reins in your way, They'll be too long or too short, and you'd better take a little time and think about it and get your hands right and your, your, your rein right before you ask your horse to what you're going to do. Now, I'm going to tap this mare. You can tap her down the shoulder with this little light bat. A lot of times you can just tap back on the hip. That'll tell them to hurry. Either one of them will usually work. Let her pop around there. And remember, you can hit her one time and you're training her. You hit her more than that, and it's self-satisfaction. You see, I didn't hit her again, and you can see that it worked pretty good. And you can do the same thing by just tapping them back on the croup. I think sometimes the croup works a little better on this mare if you really want to get her ready to spin real good. 
Now that's kind of getting it up to the high speed. That's what everybody would like to have right there. And what that is, that horse is actually now, he's learned to cross his feet and handle them. And what the horse is really doing now, I've speeded him up so that to stay up with it, he's actually loping in a circle. And he's holding his hind feet still and really turning around. And you can really crank him if they learn how. And they gotta practice and it's gotta be something that they can do. Ooh. Now I asked her for an extra spin then and she handled it pretty good. And you ought to ask them from time to time to spin more. Now, I could ask her for quite a bit today. I can tell because when I'm popping her, she's really not trying to run off. I'm having put a little contact in her mouth, but she's really not trying to run off. You can use your body position to help you do that. I can drop this leg down in there like that. See what a, what a cue that was to that mare now once she knows how. I just dropped that right leg down and, and slid my seat over a little bit in that saddle. So you begin to build other cues that tell a horse what you want him to do. That's the way that we get horses to turn around and spin like we want them to. That way, okay? I was trying to do her real light then, see if I could keep her from trying to run out of it. Now if they get a little scared, that's better. Slow down a little, but that's better. Don't like for them to try to run off too much. If you try to hurry them too much, just back down and do something slow again. Just come around there quiet. I want them to hurry, but I don't want an awful lot of it in sequence, and one right behind the other if it fuzzes the horse up. So that's kind of how we use a bat, use her feet, use her legs, try to get the horse to turn around. Now there's another real good technique in here. And I need the fence over here to do it. Remember how I wanted the horse to step around in front? Come down the fence. Be off of the fence two or three horses steps. Pull one rein, ask the horse to turn, look at the mare's feet. Don't get right on the rail because you'll force the horse to back up. Pull, walk up to the rail, learn to cross your feet. Same thing I was doing in the circle. See, same thing I was doing in the circle. Pull, walk up, keep the front end moving. And you can repeat that time after time. You can do it at the trot. I like for her to come towards the fence. That puts that outside foot going in front. Make him make the perfect eye in there. Make him cross those legs like that. And everybody wants to set them down and pull them back too hard. The people that I try to work with want to use a lot of neck grain, and here's what they want to do. Now this mare will come straight across, but they want to do that in the beginning. No, don't do it that way. Drop that rein there so the horse can give his head. Now let him follow those feet and learn the steps he needs to make. Drop that rein over there off. Don't neck rein him. See that horse learn how to handle those feet? And you can use that real good right there. That'll help you. You can use that on the fence. You can use it at a walk, trot. You can use it at a lope. All of that will get your horse to turn it around. Now I'll lope this mare a little bit. I'm going to show you a little technique here now that'll help you for this. Ooh. Sit down. Say whoa. That'll help your stopping. It'll help your turning. And it will quieten the horse. Don't ever turn him at the same place all the time. Ooh. Teach your horse collection because he has to drive off his hindquarters. We haven't talked much about collection yet, but we're going to, and this is a good technique for it. Don't stop at the same place at any time. Ooh. See him turn the horse right around? Bring him off in that other lead. Ooh. See how easy they talk about collection and leads? That will help you right there by bringing him off, making him come right out on that other lead, making him drive. Did the mare reach for that inside lead? 
reach for it and reach and get it. She gets to anticipating the, the stop, don't stop. Just come on, lope you some circles. Now we use this to settle and quieten pleasure horses. We'll use this on horses that are pretty hot and pretty high speed and don't want to get quiet. I try to get him to lope this circle out here on a loose rein. Come around here on a loose rein. Woo. And not pull on him hardly any. All I do is just stick his head into the fence and then turn it loose. I should really make that point. As soon as you get his head bent into the fence and you turn his feet turn his head loose. Woo. Turn it loose. If you want him to relax, let him learn that he can lope without being pulled on. If you turn him around enough times, he'll get relaxed. But the key to it is let him lope out on a loose rein. Woo. See that mare coming out? Woo. On a loose rein. Having learned to handle her feet, having learned to move, and you'll enjoy that once you ever get your horse to do it. You cannot snatch, you cannot jerk. You snatch and jerk, you've slipped up on your horse, you'll fuzz him up, you get him scared of you, and you've got to use your feet and your body position and your voice. Let him relax in it. Ooh. Now this mare will get quiet instead of getting fuzzier. I've got her on a loose rein right out here now, and she's not trying to run off. I didn't stop her there then, but you, cause y'all could see her anticipating. So I said, nah, not yet. Just come on, let it slow for a while, see? Woo. That mare, I lope her out on the loose rein. Let her learn to slow down. Woo. That'll help you with your stop. It'll help you with a turnaround where the horse has to move his feet. It'll help you get a lot of balance, a lot of control in your horse. You can quieten, collect the horse. We'll have to talk a lot more about collection, but that's a good maneuver right there that you can use. If you ever get your horse to do it, you'll enjoy it because all you gotta do is just slide your feet out, turn him around, and it's gonna feel good to you. You enjoy it and your horse is going to relax. Get to where he likes it. He learns how to stop and turn around. And you've got turn around in there and let me do this one more time. And I should have done it at the trot. You can do the same thing at the trot. Ooh. Turn there and just hold your horse. Bring him on around. Down here at the trot. After you've got him stepping over, turn him and then just turn him on around if you don't want to do it too good. Let him just bring him all the way around. That's what you're trying to get done. And a horse that's sure enough trying to run hard and run off, this is the best technique that I know of to school him. Well, that's fun. That'll take your breath away. You enjoy that. A lot of fun, it'll really make an athlete out of your horse. Ooh. See, that take, you got to sit out in that saddle. You can't handle that little cute home-based position and ride through that. See where my feet went? That mare really got in that ground and turned around then. Really sat down and turned around. Slipped over on that ground, tried to come out of there running, had a back lead off, so I just let her stop. See, I had to get out over her neck then to help her get out of there. I had to help her, she was really trying. If I'm getting a little bent out over that, <laughs> out over that horn, I apologize. I'm riding her the best I can, and that's what you'll enjoy doing.
We're not really happy with uh, with the attitude about this Palomino mare and, uh, and the way she's stopping right now. She's stopped better in some of the other tapes, but she's uh, not stopping real good, not handling very much speed. So we'll look at another horse or two here and see if we don't have a little better picture of the way the horse should stop, even though they may not be stopping hard or sliding very far, they should be stopping correctly. And I think we can see that in this gray horse. Ooh. Took very little pressure then to get this horse to kind of slide and get up under his sail. Just whoa, my feet out, horse kind of slid a little out of that ground's loose. And we need to realize this before we're going to get horses slide very well, we've got to have sliding ground. I kind of found me a dry spot right there that I thought this horse would stop on. And a horse that kind of can stop, pretty neat and pretty nice. Ooh. Again, see the feet position and, and the hands. And, ooh. Pretty nice kind of stop. This can be a lot of fun if you learn how to do it, and learn to get your feet out in front of you, really make a good horseman out of you. And it'll help your horse to get so much collection, so much stop in him. That'll make you get out and ride. People ask me, why do you wear these leggings? That's why, right there. That's why you wear your leggings. So you can sit down in that saddle and can ride that horse. Now I want to come around here and try something else and see if it'll work. My mare's not give out, not a little too much out of her. What I want to do, see we got a lot more stop than we had a while ago. We've got a lot more stop now than we had when I was working out there. So that's going to help the stop. We usually finish one of those episodes with a straightaway stop. So you see nearly everywhere as we work, we try to ever keep them pulling on this horse's head straight away with both hands. So I've been working one rein at a time over there and when I do come back to one, that mare's been sliding and stopping, that fence has been helping me, then I've got a good straightaway stop. So I think that'll help us understand stopping, backing, and being able to turn around. And make sure that we understand that if we've got the turnaround on the horse, we also have the rollback. Ooh. 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 Now we're a little hot and tired right now, and we're not doing that real good, but I hope we can see that that's all a rollback is, is a stop and a turn around and go this way. That's all a rollback is, stop, now get into your pivot and your turn. The same maneuver we taught him, same one we taught him there. So you've got the rollback, you also have a little pivot, get my horse off of the bit a little bit, See if I can't get her to pivot a little better. Now we're getting a little lighter. Have to work just a little bit. Till we can get the horse to step across. All those are the same maneuvers. If your horse comes around there and he gets a little heavy in his mouth, walk him around and cool him out a little bit. But don't, and work with his mouth. Get him light again. Work with it. Just talk to him, just ride around there and let him cool. Talk to his mouth, learn. Don't get upset with me. Pick his face up over here at the side and try to avoid a steady pull. Just, just pick it up like that. Come around over this way and just pick it up. Tell the horse just to cool down. Just get quiet and relax and give me your face. Come around there. If we do all of those things, I think we'll really enjoy our horses. We'll, there's a lot more we can do with them. We'll have good circles on them, good stops, and we can turn them around and we'll enjoy it. Gosh, it'll improve your horsemanship so much and you'll enjoy it. So I think it's a good exercise to get our horses stopping, turning around, pivoting, rolling back, and all the maneuvers that everybody thinks is really so hard to teach a horse, which really, if you go by the numbers, go through the steps, is really not that hard.
I think as we look back over this tape, I think we've got some good information in there on how to get our horses to turn around, how to do the spin, so to speak. We've got some good information on stops and backs. Unfortunately, I think for towards the end of the tape, I think our mare got a little hot and got a little, uh, little strong up in the bridle to be able to really want to stop. Remember, we said a horse has to stop, want to stop. He's got to turn the motor off. And I think right there towards the end, she got to where she didn't want to turn it off. And uh, again, a good cooling period and come back and start over again uh, if your horse goes to doing that. So I think if we'll use those maneuvers, uh, use those techniques all the way through, I think that we'll be able to add those maneuvers to our horse. He can see me right out of that right eye because I can see it. A horse has monocular vision. He can look right back here with one eye. If you can see his eye, he can see you. So you ought to always put your hand on him. You ought to speak to him, let him look at you. And then he'll never be afraid of you. He's not afraid of what he can see and get used to. And, and if he can see you, right here I ought to be, every time I walk him,